Dr. Ken Namadi was Namani was the president of the Nigerian Senate when there was a push by the former president to amend the Constitution. In order to enjoy a third term as in office as Senate President, Dr. Namani spearheaded a sustained resistance to that effort. And many years down the line, how much progress has been made with Nigeria's constitutional democracy? We are now being joined by Senator Namani himself, who has tried to articulate his thoughts on those momentous times in a book titled Standing Strong, which is billed for public presentation in Abuja, the nation's capital, on Thursday, the 21st of October. We'll also take him up on legislative reforms, insecurity in the southeast of the country, and a bunch of other issues from the Fifth Senate. So we'd like to welcome Senator Kennedy, uh, Ken Namani. Good afternoon, Senator. We want, to, we want to start with last week's Yes, Senator, we want to start from last weekend's state congresses of the All Progressives Congress. How would you assess the entire exercise? Hello, Senator, if you can hear me, I'm going to ask the question one more time. Let's start from last week's state congress of the All Progressive Congress of the APC. How would you assess the entire exercise, Senator? Well, the, as far as I can see, it looks to me that uh, we're in a state of perpetual growth. We're trying to grow all the time. We haven't grown yet. <laughs> uh, because if you notice, in almost all the states, there are either one or two or three parallel uh, sort of structures. And we suggested from the beginning that we in the Kataka Committee will not tolerate uh, all these parallel issues. People should learn how to work together. People in the same party, but they are not uh, uh, acting as if they are the same party. So the, the problem of each party is the party itself. Uh, quarreling up and down, so many parallel lines. And uh, I, I, I don't think it, it all goes well for... I know politics is struggle, but the type of struggle that I'm seeing is it looks to me very uncivilized because people who belong to the same party we are having difficulty following our own guidelines. If we can follow our own guidelines, drawn up by ourselves, uh, which guideline are we going to follow? And it, it runs across all the parties. They don't say this one is exemplary, none. So I'm not happy about that, I can say that. All right, not happy about some inter-party um, inter democracy there, but do you think that with this parallel Congress is here and there, APC is still on the right track to restore peace within? I didn't get your question clearly. I said please, with, you, with inter-party politics almost taking root and with parallel Congress is here and there, do you think APC is still the, the right party and are still on track to restore peace within? Uh, I have every reason to believe that. APC has the capacity to do the right thing if it decides to do so. Uh, the, the, the bickerings, the quarrel uh, is, uh, yes, you may say it's part of uh, a, a democratic process. People trying to express their, their interests, but um, if we overdo it, 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 it amounts to disorganization. Uh, people are not, uh, I think people will feel a lot more comfortable if we can play politics of ideas and not all this, uh, this is my lineup, this is your lineup. And it's the same party. The party has, should have one single listen that permeates, even if there's a, a dissenting voice. It should be based on issues, but this one is based on personalities. This man is going this way, this woman is going the other way. And it's the same party, for that matter. So I am not, I maintain that it is not something to be proud of, that we're not able to bear our own guidelines. All right, Senator, let's switch topics a bit and talk about your book, 
Standing Strong. What motivated you to write it and why is it coming out now? Well, uh, you as a journalist, you know how difficult it is uh, for you to write even a letter. And if somebody must document his or her experiences over many years, it, it takes, it requires careful handling because it's something written for, not only for the present, but for posterity, it's a historical document. And I, as somebody who uh, was uh, at, at the driver's seat uh, during that journey of our constitutional amendment, I, I figured that I owe it to myself and to my family and to the generation yet unborn to explain my own side and what I observed and what I participated in. Because others have told the story diff with different types of fanfare. I figured that I, I should also tell my own story and not people telling my story for me, since I'm still around. And uh, uh, yes, it took me time. In fact, it was ready as of last year, but because of general uh, uh, lockdown caused by the COVID-19, uh, nobody thought about uh, uh, presenting a book to the public. So. I, I, it is better that it's out than it never came out. All right, as they say, it's better late than never. Uh, you stood against former President Olusegun about to just third term agenda in principle and on the floor of the Senate. What was the experience like? Try to relive some of the experience for those who probably might not have been there and those who probably have misinterpreted the situation. I, uh, Senator I'm afraid I did not get the main gist of here. Uh, what yeah, I want to I find, did, I, I we want to get to uh, accordingly. Okay, Senator Namani, we want to get a first hand um, look into that particular incident against former President Olusegun Obasanjo because we know that you stood um, against the third term agenda in principle and on the floor of the Senate. Give us your own side of the story. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I think I've gotten a, a little bit of what you're asking. Well, you see, uh, it is not between, it is an, it's not a matter of uh, Namani versus uh, former president of Basanjo. No, certainly not. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, uh, I presided over the proceedings of the Senate. I am pretty much uh, conversant with what happened. And my colleagues, uh, who along with me uh, did what we had to do. Uh, I remember, I, as I said somewhere, that uh, I relied heavily on some, uh, some people like uh, Senator McCain of Arizona, John McCain. He wrote a book, uh, or is it, it, the title of the book is Why Courage Matters. He said that courage is not the absence of fear but the ability to do what we had to do despite our fears. Yes, we, we were under tremendous political pressure at that time. And most of you journalists who covered National Assembly during my uh, tenure as Senate President, number three citizen, witnessed what transpired. At a point, it got a, a point when we, I, I was called upon uh, someone that to us to clear the gallery. Anybody who didn't like the, the, the outcome can go to court. I insisted that clearing the galleries is unparliamentary. The, the reason why we have galleries in the parliament is for people to participate, to people to see what is going on. Because publicity tends to confer legitimacy to actions. And uh, uh, we, we continued the debate. I suggested that if any person, if, if they wanted me to clear the gallery, that to send the cameraman away, somebody should come and move a motion to that effect. And I'm not the one to move a motion. I'm the one to take it and, uh, and throw it back to the senators to debate upon. Because in the Senate, we don't argue, we don't discuss, we debate. 
So somebody was uh, asked to go and move the, the motion. Uh, the person who asked him to move that motion is late now. Uh, when you read the book, you see the details. I don't need to call it right here, but that, that's the essence of the book. The guy who was to move the motion on the floor of the Senate, at the time he was to do so, I looked at his seat. He was nowhere to be seen. So he didn't move the motion. And even I was also summoned back to the villa. What happened? Nothing was discussed about clearing the gallery to allow senators to speak their mind. I said, well, the person to move the motion, the motion was not moved, so I had nothing to take. We continued. The debates lasted six days. And uh, I commend, I will always commend the senators who served with me. And uh, they, they, they showed a lot of strength because so many of them are well established before coming to the Senate. And uh, they, they realized that politics is service. And uh, most of them have served themselves before coming to the Senate. So they, they, they were with me and gave me every support. So everything we achieved or failed to achieve was with all the senators and the media. The media supported us because we, at this point, institutionalized uh, publicizing the proceedings of Senate so that people will know what we are doing because we are, we are not amending our private con constitution. We are amending the constitution of Nigeria. So Nigerians ought to know how to participate, uh, be it indirectly. Uh, it, it, it went on well, and uh, as I said, not that we are not worried about the pressure and the uh, all the promises some people got, uh, and uh, the all the inducements, but the important thing is that the, the essence of due process was followed. We yes. followed the procedure. Senator. And wherever it took us to, it's not history. Yes. Right, Senator. And I want to ask, what manner of cooperation did you get from your colleagues in the Fifth Senate in that fight? Uh, Total cooperation, total. As a matter of fact, I was, I lived at uh, Poe quarters, uh, the senator's quarters then. I had moved to senate president's quarters. And uh, anybody who visited me, my colleagues will rush and come and ask, what has the person come to tell you? Is it bothering you? Uh, have they come to arrest you? I had the maximum support because uh, I, I think because the senators actually elected me, I was not imposed on them. And thank God that I did not disappoint them. Many of them are still alive. So many of them are alive. Some of them can come on your program and testify to what I'm saying. And many journalists who cover the National Assembly can say to that, I enjoyed maximum cooperation uh, of, uh, 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 of all the senators because I ran a transparent uh, uh, leadership of the National Assembly at the time. All right, Senator, we want to say um, kudos to th that job well done. Now, moving away from that, let's talk about things going down in the Southeast. Your immediate political base has recently been polarized by insecurity. What do you think is happening and how can normalcy be restored? Well, this is the problem of mass hysteria. By this, I mean to start, uh, to start a, a, a revolution. Uh, it may not be as difficult as stopping it. Uh, people have been on the streets, and now to take them out becomes a problem. The issue of sit at home and the random killings is very, very unfortunate because I don't see what that will achieve. We have now turned the guns against ourselves to the extent that every Monday, like today, our people are staying at home when they're not sick. And our people, are, our people are known to be very industrious. You can imagine how much they are losing on people who are running hotels, daily paid workers, are not able to go to anywhere because there's something called sit at home order. I have no idea what that order is supposed to achieve. It tells you the danger of our times. And uh, some of us have been encouraging our people to come out of that. 
Yes, if we are agitating for something, we can do it in a more polite and more civilized manner. Sit at home and shooting people randomly, people who have no hand in what is happening in the country. I don't know what we aim to achieve that. Not too long ago, some highly qualified me medical practitioners that took many years to train, they were slaughtered like cows on, on the road with a pool of blood. I don't know why people are not so worried about this. So uh, it is a very unfortunate incident. It is ill-advised, and I don't know what is going to achieve. Senator, the clamor for the Igbo presidency is very much still on. Even some of the stakeholders from outside the zone are believing that you are standing as a credible former Senate president makes you eminently qualified to run. Is that something you might be considering? You see, I belong to all progressive Congress. I'm not aware that the party has done any zoning. Uh, if it had not been zoned to Southeast, or if it had not been zoned at, at all, and I am clamoring for it, what if I, I clamor and it ends up uh, uh, nothing? I, I don't think that is my worry at this time. What is bothering me now is the fact that Southeast, that is known for enterprise, for entrepreneurial activities, is going down the drain uh, senselessly, uh, killing people and causing panic. Because now people stay at home, even when on Mondays, even when nobody, some people are saying that, uh, the, the people who say they should stay at home say that they don't know about it. That's what I mean by starting this issue of mass hysteria. People have difficulty stopping what they started initially. So Igbo uh, presidency is secondary to the lives of our people now, because uh, if the Igbos are just turning around and people are being killed every day, I don't think the ground is fertile enough to talk about presidency or, or to, to, to declare one's intention. I think it, it, it is probably better for our people to think twice and let all, all of us discourage in our, our only two ways those that are taking time to create problems for the, the Igbo nation. All right, um, Senator, some um, civil society groups have been criticizing the current Senate for the, some of the electoral amendments that they've actually made, that it's more of what favors APC as against what favors Nigerians. So, Nathan Amani, I don't know if you got my question. And I said several civil society groups. I did not. Okay, That's several, why I was listening attentively. Okay, several civil society groups have been criticizing this current Senate, and they are claiming that several of the electoral amendments that have been made are more prepared towards suiting the APC as a party rather than the general populace and Nigerians in general. I, I don't right. think, uh, if, if I understood you correctly, yeah. uh, if I heard you clearly, you, you, you are saying that the amendments being made tends to favor APC rather than the Nigerian populace. Yeah. Uh, am I correct? Is yeah, that very correct question? on that one. Okay, now I don't think so, because uh, only last Tuesday, or is it 16th of this month, uh, uh, um, the Senate rightly supported the idea of electronic uh, fast transmission of uh, results. It's for everybody. It, show, it, it, uh, it uh, confers legitimacy and uh, authenticity to results, rather than passing through many channels and people fiddle around uh, the, the results. Uh, that does not favor APC alone. It favors all the parties. So I don't think APC is, 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 uh, is uh, encouraging the members of uh, National Assembly to just think about uh, how about Look, on direct one primaries of the real principles of a good legislator is the ability to think independently the, the ability to see what is good for the country not even for the party alone 
it has to be a, a, a legislator must think beyond his party and be beyond the self. All right. Um, think about the country. Senator Namani. What is good for the country? If you can hear me. Um, yes. How about in regards to direct primary? Certainly, the People's Democratic Party have been kicking against it. Uh, certainly, um, direct primaries is what the All Progressive Congress seems to be favoring right now. Well, I, I, I'm not speaking for National Assembly, but I think that uh, the issue of primaries, direct primary is fairly expensive and uh, to be necessary for parties to decide for, for, for each party what, whether I want direct or indirect primaries. Uh, but it should be free and fair and allow people to make choice who will lead them. Uh, I, I'm not too sure we, we, we can put everything into our law book that we tell people where to go to bed at night and tell people if they should eat gare or amala. <laughs> I don't think that will help us. I think it's necessary. Uh, certain, uh, certain things will be a decision that will be allowed political parties to make. Uh, whether they want direct or indirect, I think it should be flexible. So, you see, we went ahead in copying the American Constitution, but we failed to copy the practice. You cannot stay in one place and outlaw uh, people at a situation. If people would like to uh, conduct direct primary, but let it be transparent, let it be legitimate, allow people to make their choice. I think that is not... I'm expressing personal view. I'm not speaking for the party okay. or for anybody as, as such. I'm telling you what I think might be good for us. Okay. All right. Okay. And that's the essence of my book, following the due process. Do you yes. Okay, Senator Namani, thank you. So I want to ask, what is your stand on this call for the restructuring of Nigeria at this particular time? Well, restructuring of Nigeria is inevitable. Because even companies restructure for growth, restructure in the sense that it will enhance our capacity to perform as a nation, to streamline things and, and not overburden the federal government with things that state can, uh, can handle. There are so many things. Take, for instance, the issuance of licenses. You stay here and uh, you know whom to issue a license in uh, Adamawa, in Enugu, in Cross River. There are things that we can decentralize uh, and, and, and make it more efficient so that people can uh, go about their daily uh, occupation without uh, bureaucratic layers here and there. So people misunderstand the idea of restructuring to mean splitting. No, we are better off staying together and uh, but having a level playing field for every person to express his or her own talent. That's my own understanding. I understand the restructuring, how to make Nigeria look more efficient and effective. As it stands now, I don't think we are very, very efficient. Look at countries that we started with. How do we compare with them? I know that as of 1960s, Nigeria was doing a lot better than South Korea. Look at where South Korea is. You may call it Asian tigers or Asian dragons. That again goes back to leadership. We must. Nationals are coming out of South Korea. Mm, all right. I want to say many thanks to you, Senator Ken Ugu Unaman, the former president of Senate here in Nigeria from the years 2005 through to 2007. Thank you for joining us here on Newsday.